This video goes how to perform some operations with fractions. So we're going to start with adding fractions. It's important that you have the same denominator. In this case we do. So that means our denominator stays the same and we're going to add the top numbers. So here 2 thirds plus 2 thirds equals 4 thirds. Our second example here is subtracting. Same as adding, as long as you have the common denominator, you can keep that the same, and then just subtract the top numbers. When you are adding mixed numbers, the easiest thing to do is to change them into an improper fraction, meaning one where the numerator is a bigger number than the denominator. So we're going to take our whole number, multiply it by the bottom, and then add the top. So 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Now we notice that our denominators aren't the same, so we need to multiply our fractions and change them into equivalent fractions in order to make the denominators the same. I know between 3 and 2, that my lowest common denominator for that is 6. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my first fraction by 2, and then the second fraction by 3 to get 8 over 6, and 15 over 6. Now my denominator is the same, so I can add my fractions together to give me an answer of 23 over 6. You do not need to change it back into a mixed number. Let's do another example, this time with subtraction. So I see a mixed number. I'm going to change it into an improper fraction. 1 times 7 plus 4. So 11 over 7 minus 3 over 4. I notice that they're not the same. So I'm going to multiply my first fraction by 4 and my second fraction by 7 in order to get a common denominator. So here I get 44 over 28 and 21 over 28. Now that my denominator is the same, I can subtract those two numbers to give me a final answer of 23 over 28. Our final example here is now we're adding and subtracting, but we have three numbers. So we still need to make sure that all three numbers are the same. I can tell looking at those three numbers that my lowest common denominator is going to be 12. So I'm going to change each of those fractions so that they have a denominator of 12. So the first one, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. Second one, top and bottom by 3. And last one, top and bottom by 4. So now I'm going to have 2 over 12 plus 9 over 12, minus 8 over 12. And now I can keep my denominator the same and then add and subtract the tops together. So 2 plus 9 is 11, minus 8 would be 3, which gives me 3 over 12. And now I know one more thing. I can actually reduce this to lowest terms by dividing the top and the bottom by 3. The more comfortable you are with your multiplication tables, the easier working with fractions will be. Our next example that we're going to look at is some multiplying and dividing. If you are multiplying fractions, you're going to multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together. So 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6. No common denominator needed. Let's do another example here with a negative number. Multiply the tops. Multiply the bottoms, we get minus 10 over 45. I can reduce by dividing the top and the bottom by 5 to get minus 2 over 9 as my final answer. Now dividing fractions is almost the same thing. The only thing that you need to do differently is to change the sign and flip the second fraction. After that, you've changed your division problem into a multiplication problem, which is going to allow you to multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. Here, 
we're going to add one more step. I guess this should be C, probably, and D. We have a mixed number in here, so we're going to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. So 1 times 9 is 9, plus 4 is 13. The second thing that I'm going to do is change the sign, flip the fraction, and then I'm going to multiply through. But I'll show you a trick here. Before you multiply, if you have the same number diagonally across the equal sign or one that you can divide by, you can actually simplify right away. So here, if I divide the bottom on this side by 9, I'm left with 1. And if I divide the top on this side by 9, I'm left with 1, which is going to give me 13 over minus 2 which I'm going to rewrite with the negative on top as minus 13 over 2. The last one that you should be familiar with is a word problem. In this one, Sarah, Fred, and Tom ordered a pizza. Sarah eats a third. Fred eats a half, a quarter, excuse me, and Tom eats an eighth. We're asked how much of the pizza is left. So what I need to know are two things. One, how much the three of them ate in total, and two, how much is left over. So I'm going to end up using addition and subtraction. So one whole pizza, so let's let P represent the amount of pizza left. And I'm going to say that P is going to be one which would be my whole pizza, because a whole pizza is one whole, minus Sarah plus Fred plus Tom. So now what's left for me to do is to put that into some math. So Sarah ate a third, Fred ate a quarter, and Tom ate an eighth. I need to add those together and then take away from one to figure out how much is left. Before I can add the numbers in the brackets, I need to change them into a common denominator. From those three numbers, I know that my common denominator is uh, 24, so I'm going to change them into all fractions that are out of 24. And looking ahead, I'm also going to change my one into a fraction out of 24. So Sarah ate 8 24ths, Fred ate 6 24ths, and Tom ate 3 24ths. So in total, they ate 17 24ths of the pizza, which means that left over they have seven pizza, seven out of 24. So therefore, seven twenty-fourths of the pizza is left. Those are some examples of doing order of operations with fractions.